You're listening to the Foreign and International Medical Graduate Show, a podcast to inspire physicians in the process of immigration to the United States and access to graduate medical education. We create meaningful and helpful content that motivates medical students and doctors throughout the world with the goal of creating a community that supports itself and gives feedback to each other, that stays updated with the most recent tips and advice on how to make it in America and become a successful resident or fellow in the speciality of your dreams. Dr. Alonso Osorio is board certified and residency trained in both emergency and family medicine and will be bringing you 20 years of his personal experiences, struggles and motivation. We'll be chatting with people like you to talk about the lessons they've learned along their personal path, how to make an impact and how we can all benefit from it. Also, we'll analyze the current resources available and how to benefit from them. Thanks for joining us. Please enjoy the show. Hello, guys. Welcome back. Dr. Alonso Osorio with OsorioMD.com is here. And as I'm looking through technicalities in my website, I want to apologize. As I created the website www.osoriomd.com, the website www.osoriomd.com, fmg-imgcast.com has been taken down. And as I just noted, that website address for emailing is not actively working. So we're going to be transitioning for now, if you want to get a hold of me, to alonsojosorio at yahoo.com, alonsojosorio at yahoo.com, A-L-O-N-S-O-J-O-S-O-R-I-O at yahoo.com. You can also send it to gmail.com, and we'll see how we get connected. 2021 started strongly. I have two episodes still in the authorization pipelines of the compliance department for the people that I interviewed. So you're going to see probably a little bit more of a bulk of episodes coming up in February. But I'm going to try to produce this one, and... This is pretty much along the same discussion that we had in our YouTube channel regarding the Step 2 cancellation. So everything that you want to know about the Step 2 cancellation, I know it has created a lot of controversy, some good ones, some bad comments, but for the most part, it's been uh, well accepted by the medical community. So this is hot off the press, big gossip. Uh, It has been reported by the USMLE website that based on a posting on January the 26th of 2021, we're talking four days ago, the process of trying to relaunch USMLE Step 2 that had been canceled for a period of 12 to 18 months and in the process of reconsidering if they were going to go ahead and relaunch that Step 2 CS, they have decided to halt, put a halt to it, and there is no plans to ever continue with this test. It has been discontinued, terminated, and I think it's been putting down to sleep forever. We all know that from the very beginning, since the very inception of this test, it has been a remarkable controversy. Remember, American grads started taking a similar test called the OSCE, they call it the OSCE, and they were taking, or still take to this day, some sort of variation of what the USMLE was testing in foreign medical graduates. So they soon realized in the late 90s, early 2000s, that foreign medical graduates were lacking interpersonal communication skills in the English language, and they decided why not to test foreign medical grads on this. And I was one of those subjects that started taking back in the late 90s, early 2000s, the clinical skills assessment. And at that point in time, we used to pay $1,200. I guess that you guys are paying about $1,500 by now. But Americans were not taking the CSA. They were already taking some sort of included in medical school type of assessment. So I took my CSA. I went to Philadelphia. Back then, 20 years ago, there was only one site for administration of the test. It was in Market Street in Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and you have to travel. And I had to incur in those traveling expenses, lodging, driving, etc. So it was rather costly and demanded for you to be actually living within the United States. 
Soon they realized that they were making pretty good money out of the uh, foreign medical graduates through the CFMG, and they decided to extend this test onto U.S. grads. So things got a little bit more extended, more complicated. So you did not only have a step one, a step two by itself, and a step three, but they decided to add a step two CS. So they divided the step two in two processes. One of them was the clinical knowledge, and the other one, other one was the clinical skills. That is homologous to what I took 20 years ago. That was the CSA. Anyway, a lot of... Uh, uh, big vocals here, but they all have an important meaning. We all have to remember that the Step 2 CS meant to test for the integrated clinical encounter, the interpersonal communication skills, and the English language proficiency for foreigners. We were mandated to take the TOEFL, and on top of that, they wanted to see if we were able to actually speak some decent English during a face-to-face -face encounter. Because we all seen during regular practice there is consultants that over the phone, you literally don't understand anything of what they say. A small percentage, but sometimes it's really hard with our very thick accents. And I've been trying to get rid of my accent, but it's rather impossible. No matter what, let's get back to the point. Big news, step two has been discontinued. There is huge implications for foreign medical grads. If you go on YouTube, you find certain American people U.S. grads commenting on this, they have happy faces, they're smiling, they're saying, oh, we're really happy that they stopped doing this test, we don't think it was fair, we were traveling, we had to pay for lodging, we had to pay for the for the transportation, and it was pricey, $1,500, we already have big school loans, I don't think it was necessary, we were taking a bunch of similar tests throughout medical school to assess our clinical skills and communication skills, so they felt that this was a waste, waste of their time. They have, they have high passing rates, and they're just super, super excited. For us, it was one of those things that cut away to prove the residency program directors the capacity that we had to interact with patients and to communicate with them and to discuss our thought process with other consultants and put in paper our thought process and they wanted to see how we were writing and speaking the foreign language. So I know it was so hard for us sometimes to prepare because we had to simulate case encounters before we showed up. We had to work with peers and friends, or we had to take some sort of rotation selectives or clerkships that help get us to be confident and interact with these fake uh, patients. But as the pandemic came along, you all know that travel restrictions came throughout the planet and within the United States, obviously non-essential traveling was remarkably canceled and people are not going anywhere. They are doing a lot of uh, online meetings and the technology has really bloomed. And we have seen that these companies in technology like Zoom and Citrix are exploding in the marketplace because they're, they're just offering the, the whole interface a very stable and now with the high uh, uploading and downloading speeds of the internet, this has made remarkably things remarkably easy. So they soon realized that step one was happening, step two clinical knowledge was happening, uh, but the test results were delayed. And then they decided, no, these these people, these foreign medical grads and U.S. grads, cannot take the CS. Why? Because this requires to potentially expose all these people to the coronavirus. Imagine, imagine the, the complexity of the uh, uh, protocols and procedures that they had to put in place to get people tested before the exam, make sure they have negative COVID tests, then or also consider to put them or in quarantine for 14 days within the United States before showing to the testing center and within the testing center signing waivers and then exposing themselves to 10, 12, uh, actors, physician encounters in different rooms, touching doorknobs, pencils, pens, tablets, computers, etc. You were exposing the proctors, you were exposing yourself, you were exposing the simulated uh, patients. So it is remarkably, remarkably litigious to, to run a test like this, specifically for the risk of transmission and epidemiological consequences. The other factor is that 
they have five or six ten testing sites across the United States, and they have to pay rent, they have to pay uh, software, computers, obviously the patients to to get on board on 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 this. And since nothing was happening, patients were not coming. They decided to start shutting down these places. And despite the fact that USMLE that is backed by the Federation of State Medical Boards and the National Boards of Medical Examiners and the Educational Commission of Foreign Medical Grads. They have to be non-for-profit. They, they have to be profitable some way to survive, to have funds available, to keep uh, uh, ensuring the safety of the American public and by regulating us, foreign medical graduates and medical students of the United States. So they have decided that Pretty much the step two is a no-go. They gave it a break. They said, let's let's give it a shot. If 12 to 18 months, we can figure this out. And we know that due to uh, peaks in the pandemic, the new strain coming along, the holidays coming by, holidays having had come by, and that this led to a huge surge in the cases of COVID-19, they just decided, you know what? It's out of the books. We're not going to do it. There was already a lot of pushback from the medical societies and physicians alike because they have done some correlational studies uh, that these tests had a very high passing rate and they felt that this, the clinical studies that have done and with the strong research showed that there was no correlation into providing an assessment, full assessment that an applicant that passed the step 2 CS was actually going to be a good doctor at communicating. The Foreign and International Medical Graduate Podcast is proudly sponsored by nextdaypodcast.com. As I said, nextdaypodcast.com. They provide podcasters like me with affordable podcast editing services with 24 hours turnarounds. You simply send them your raw recordings and they do the rest. If you're not podcasting right now at this moment, check out their amazing podcast launch packages. I'm one of those that is extremely satisfied. And if you use the promo code MEDICALNEXTDAY, that's MEDICALNEXTDAY, you will receive 10% of any of their services. Again, that's nextdaypodcast.com Well, I think what they ha- are saying is that they're going to try to assure us that they're going to continue to test for communication and interpe- interpersonal skill testing uh, putting some of these ideas into a step one and a step three. The step two clinical knowledge will continue there and we'll see. I don't know. It's a crazy year for FMGs. Uh, step one is going into a pass-fail score. I don't know if that was the right move by them. I think that looking back, they, they probably are biting their tongues. Now with the step two CS being out of the books, uh, I think for us, for a medical graduates, might be a little bit more complicated. Why? Because I feel that uh, program directors will have issues developing the confidence of the recruiting, the recruitment process to prove that you're actually good at interacting with patients and people and you actually your English is good enough. Um, we'll see how that goes, but uh, we need to probably find a way to est- strengthen our applications by doing what? Probably by doing more electives, more observerships, and guess what? Nobody's doing observerships, nobody's doing electives. Is really, really complicated. Well, as soon as they determined that they had discontinued the step to CS, they also had already gotten together and they had created six pathways for the 2021 match and the eligibility for participation. And I guess now that they have canceled this, they have created a sixth pathway for the 22 match and we're going to probably try to determine what those changes are. So be in the lookout for the ECFMG uh, new uh, pathways of certification, especially for the 2022 year. And we'll see how that goes. By now, uh, I can tell you, you, you guys will save a little bit of money, but I don't know if this is going to be helpful. We understand where they're coming from. But uh, the end of 2020... 
the beginning of 2021 is striking us really hard. This is potentially good or bad news. Uh, I would say don't get disappointed. You're not the first people that go through this uh, problem. Uh, you won't be the last. Soon this will be sorted out. I would say continue to study. Uh, try to get good scores. Be confident. Everything will eventually come to some sort of control. But drastically, this is going to change. My personal opinion, I think they're going to develop some sort of uh, virtual online platform that will allow to assess in a more reliable fashion the interpersonal communication skills. And I think that's why they partner up with the occupational English tests for doctors, the OET. And as we know, as of now, all the fifth pathways uh, that are delineated through the ECFMG require you to take the OET. And I think the OET is just going to get better and stronger. And I think uh, it's really getting tailored to doctors, nurses, you know, and physicians alike to test communication skills. And I think you know, as technology continues to evolve, they're going to really put more weight on this. As of now, guys, do your best to study hard. I'm very interested to see what's going to be like the statistics that will be published by the ECFMG on the percentage of foreign medical grads that were able to actually make it into graduate medical education in the United States for the current interviewing cycle. And what percentage of FMGs actually are part of the workforce? We all know that we were somewhere between 23 and 26 percent of all the U.S. Uh, physicians. We were about 20 to 26 percent. I don't know, but the gossip is that actually uh, we are not getting that many interviews. So be in the lookout for more information. This is frustrating. This is upsetting. So if you want more information, I have a little. 11-minute uh, commentary on this in Spanish for my Spanish speaker. I have another 12-minute commentary in English on my YouTube channel. And this is the formal release of the podcast, uh, episode number 60, for the information that you need to know to keep you up to date. So please listen, share, like, discuss, leave a comment. Remember, www.osoriomd.com. And for now, send me emails to alonsojosoriayahoo.com. If you have any questions, concerns, please go to my Facebook uh, group, uh, fmgimgpodcast.com. Leave your message. And, well, I heard that people want more inspirational uh, podcasters to come along. I'm going to try to bring those motivational stories back into to the show. And I hope you like it. Remember, go to the website. And go to YouTube and look for Alonso Osorio, A-L-O-N-S-O, last name O-S-O-R-I-O. Subscribe, like, and just set up the little bell for notifications. Thank you again for listening and stay in touch, guys. God bless you all.